And we know Christmas is this that that joyous time. I mean, we begin our, our time of worship of singing about that unspeakable joy. And we know that, that Christmas is supposed to be that, that, that joyful life. So here's what I thought we'd do. Let's do something a little different this morning. Is that okay? Let's have a Christmas sing-along. So here's what I'm going to do, because I know you're excited. It's Christmas time. I'm going to start the line from, from a familiar Christmas song, and then I want you to finish it, okay? So some of them, I'm only going to give you a couple words. So you got to get ready. you got to listen. But these will be songs that you know. So you're ready. It's the most Wonderful time of the year. All right, good job, Ben. Gina, that wasn't hard. So, so you, you got this, sir. Have a holy, holy jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. All right, there, there you go. You, you did. That was a little extended. You have to do a little more. So, so now everybody's figured out this is not that difficult. So you can all participate. So some of you that are sitting back here with that little star, you know, you can sing too. It's a Christmas song, and I guarantee you're going to know this. Ready? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, oh what fun it is to ride one horse open sleigh. Hey, there you go. There you go. Good job, good job, good job. Okay, now let's make it a little more difficult. Ready? You're, I'm only going to give you just a couple words. Walking in a... I, I can't even... You guys got this. Okay, hey, here's probably my, my favorite crazy Christmas song. Deck the halls with bells of holly. Oh, 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 oh. Tis the season to be. Jolly. Okay, now, now, wait a minute. Some of you did not have your fall of all. <laughs> hey, the words are not that difficult. It's fa la 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 now, I can tell even those who weren't singing were now smiling. And that's a, that's a change because some of you don't smile when we sing. So, so Christmas is fun. And Christmas is full of joy. And it's funny how the Christmas songs help us to, you guys will never think of those songs the same again, will you? And because they help to communicate that joy of Christmas. But let me, let's be honest for a moment. It, it's just us. Do we always feel that joy at Christmas? Most days, are we feeling that, that Christmas joy uh, around this time of year? Probably not. Because honestly, there's a lot of things that could be going on in our life that's kind of dampering or hindering that joy. You know, for some of you, it may be something personal. <laughs> it may just be some personal thing that, that you're experiencing that just seems to just kind of be draining the joy out of you. Or maybe this morning, for you, it's just like one crisis after another after another has just continued to hit. And, and you're thinking, I'm struggling to feel the joy of Christmas. And, and with that avalanche of problems, with all those things just kind of falling down on us, it's really sometimes hard to have a holy, jolly Christmas when we really don't feel it. And then adding on all those things in life, most of us are busy, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but this time of year is extremely busy for me. There's stuff going on at the, in the family. There's stuff going on at church. There's stuff, I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff going on around Christmas. So we get really busy. And I want to prove to you that you're busy as well. How many of you have taken time this Christmas season to sit around the open fire roasting chestnuts? <laughs> Does anybody actually do that? You know, chestnuts roasting on an open. I've never done that. You know, I, I, I would have some like burnt chestnuts thrown in the fire. I mean, I don't know what it would end up with, but we're busy. We're, we're, we're overwhelmed. We got all kinds of stuff. And, and he, if we're going to really be honest this morning, when we think about Christmas, most of us really don't want to be walking in a winter wonderland. Oh, you know, we, we don't even want to be driving in a winter wonderland. <laughs> you know, so, so we're starting to think of all these things, and we're thinking, you know, catch me in your town. We started talking, but now you're getting depressed. Because <laughs> now I'm thinking about all this stuff that's going on in my life. So I, I, I did it because I, I, want, I want to ask one important question. And that question is this. 
Are you truly satisfied this Christmas? Because Christmas is a joyful time. I mean, when the announcement of Jesus was made, it said, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So, so we have to ask the question, are we really satisfied this Christmas? Our teaching series throughout the month of December has been one that, that I've called True Story. And my goal has been, I want to challenge you to look deeper into those familiar Christmas stories. Most of us have heard the story of the shepherds and the story of the birth of Jesus and the story of the wise men. But I, I want to challenge you to go deeper into those. And I want us to, to develop a more intimate look at Jesus Christ. And as we look at that true story, we began a couple weeks ago in John's talk. As we saw John begin the story of Jesus, he said, in the beginning. He said, in the beginning the word was, which meant before creation, before time, space, and matter, Jesus already existed. And then we found that at just the right time, Jesus took on flesh and came to earth. And then last week, when we looked at the birth announcement of Jesus, and we saw that like 700 years before he was born, it was announced that Jesus would come. And the prophet Isaiah told it, and I love what he said. He said, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Well, this morning, as we continue to dive deep into that true story, we're going to go to Matthew's Gospel. And Matthew gives us a story of these guys called the Magi who came to worship Jesus after his birth. And as we read their story, I want us to think of a simple question. Am I satisfied this Christmas? So let's read together. We're in Matthew chapter 2. Let's start at verse 1. Here's what it says. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea when Herod was king. After Jesus' birth, wise men from the east arrived in Jerusalem. They asked, where is the one who was born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star rising and have come to worship him. When King Herod and all Jerusalem heard about this, they became disturbed. He called together all the chief priests and the experts in the scriptures and tried to find out from them where the Messiah was supposed to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. The prophet wrote about this. Bethlehem in the land of Judah, you are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. A leader will come from you. He will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. As he sent them to Bethlehem, he said, Go and search carefully for the child. When you have found him, report to me so that I may go and worship him too. After they had heard, they had heard the king, they start, started out. The star they had seen rising led them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They were overwhelmed with joy to see the star. When they entered the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, so they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They, God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod, so they left for their country by another road. We looked at Christmas and I asked you, are you satisfied with Christmas? And the thing is, sometimes Christmas gets tough. This time of year, there's just so much going on. And, and so what I want us to do is I want us to see from this story how we can improve our joy at Christmas. And, and actually, the answer is found right here. These guys were the, the magi. They, they were the wise men. They, they came from the east, we believe probably in the region of Babylon. And they came because they saw this star, and somehow they knew that that star represented the birth of a king in Jerusalem. So they traveled all the way to Jerusalem so that they could come and, and, and offer gifts, so that they could come and worship this new king. Now, how we find joy this Christmas time is we look at their attitude. 
We have to look at through, through their trip and the things that happened and, and even when they got there to Jesus. I think we have to look at their attitudes to see how we can increase our joy this time of year. And, and what I want to do is there's three lessons I want us to get from the story. And the way we're going to get them is I'm going to ask you three questions. You'll notice on your, in your program and your message guide I only gave you three lines. Because those three questions is what I need you to focus on. So here we go. Question number one. What do I seek? Very simple. What do I seek? Because I believe our level of joy at Christmas is directly related to what we seek. And then we have to ask ourselves, what do I seek? What do I want? What do I want to get out of Christmas? What is that thing that would make this Christmas enjoyable? What is that thing that would make this Christmas satisfying? And when we find the right answer for that, that's when we begin to find joy. So let's look at some of our answers to, to possibly that question. What would make this Christmas satisfying? What would make it enjoyable? For some of you, you would say, I would like to have snow on Christmas. And let's face it, I don't like to drive in the snow, but Christmas Day, most folks don't have to go anywhere. So, so what if we could wake up Christmas morning with like two inches of snow, and then by 10 o'clock it warmed up to 40 degrees so it all melted off the road so we could go to Grandma's or whatever. I mean, but that would be nice, right? You know, so we could say, Christmas would be enjoyable if we just had snow. For, for some of you, maybe, maybe you're, thinking, you're thinking of something a little, a little more personal. You say, Christmas would be wonderful. If all the family could get together, and it would be even more wonderful if all the family could get together and be happy. <laughs> and, and a lot of times we're thinking about that. And we're thinking that that's, it, Christmas would be great. That's what I want to get out of Christmas. Or our list could go on and on. You know, we, we have something that we decided, you know, this would be that feeling of holiday spirit. And, and you know, when I feel that feeling of holiday spirit, Christmas is wonderful. For some of you, maybe Christmas would be wonderful if you were able to find that perfect gift to give to someone. Or maybe, maybe you have that special thing that you want, that present you're hoping for. And you're saying, my Christmas would be great if I just had this Christmas morning. In case anybody's wondering, my Christmas list, if you want to make Pastor Dan's Christmas list great, it's a 30 by 50 workshop. I'm just saying, I would be tickled to death Christmas morning. You know it can't fit in a sleigh or even a four-wheel drive, so it's got to come from somewhere else. So, you know, but a lot of times we think of that. And we're saying, you know, Christmas would be great, but here's the problem. Did you notice that in all of those things that we named, there could be issues that we can't control? None of us can control the snow. Or maybe you say, well, you know, that gift thing, yeah, but have you ever been to the store and you went to get something and it's not there? And you're thinking, well, now I can't get the perfect gift, so they're going to settle for socks and underwear. And, and, and so, so you're, 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 you're thinking, and so all of those things we can't control. So when we ask the question, what do I seek? Let's look at the wise man. The wise men show us how to increase our joy at Christmas by looking for the right thing. For look what it says again in verse 2. They came to Jerusalem and they said, Where is he that is born the king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east and we come to worship him. So what did they seek? They sought Jesus. They sought to come and worship that. They were looking for him. So when we have that right attitude, that right perspective for Christmas, and we ask, what do we seek? If our answer is Jesus, the Bible says, if you seek me, you will find me if you look for me with all your heart. So, so we know we will find Jesus. So the, when we ask, what do we seek? I've been challenging you to, to look deeper into even those familiar Christmas stories. Because what I want you to do is get a glimpse of the one that was born. Just to get a picture of, of the, the king of the Jews. If our goals for Christmas is anything on that list I gave you earlier, there might be times we're disappointed. 
But I can promise you this. If your goal this Christmas is to worship Jesus, it is to find him, you will not be disappointed. And you will have joy this Christmas. So question number one, what do I see? Let's look at question number two. It's almost the same thing. Question number two is where do I look? And the reason I gave you that, the where do I look, is because when you look at the story of the wise men, they didn't always look in the right place. If you remember, they saw the star in the east, and like I said, we believe that was probably the area of Babylon. And they, they came, they traveled, and, and they get there. So as we read the story, the first place they showed, they showed up was where, in human logic, would have been the right place. If you're, we know there's a new king born in, in, in Israel, in Jerusalem. So where do you go to find a king? The palace. So they show up at the capital city and go to where the leader lives. Because normally that's where you would find. Human logic would say, go to the palace, go to the capital, go to Jerusalem. That's where you're going to find the king. Well, they get there, and the person they find in charge is a man named Herod. Herod wasn't the king. He was wicked. He wasn't the newborn king of the Jews. He was a Roman. And he was a leader over the, the, all of God's people. And he was awful. He was so awful that after he hears the story, and they're like, we come to worship a newborn king as a newborn king where? What? Well, I'll tell you what. Hey, hey, I have no idea where he is. So he goes to the Bible scholars and, and he says, you know, where, where's the, the king supposed to be born? And I said, oh, that's easy. It's Bethlehem. And he goes back and he tells him, he said, you go find him. And then you come back and tell me. Now we have the Bible, so we have all the story. And we know his intent is to kill Jesus. And that's the type of guy he was. Herod actually killed his family because he was afraid they would try to take over the throne. So he was going to kill Jesus. So where they went to look first, that was the wrong place. That was a mistake. So we have to ask ourselves this Christmas, are we looking in the wrong places? You know, we said, who do we seek? We seek Jesus. So where are we looking for him? Because often, that place we're looking, if it's a place that's centered around our worldly attitudes and our worldly desires, we're not going to find what we're looking for. We're going to find something that's going to lead us astray, just like these guys have. So I want to caution you. We have to ask ourselves, where do I look? Because we have to be careful where do we look at Christmas. Who do I seek? Or what do I seek? Where do I look? And then question number three, what do I give? And as I ask that question, uh, we find that our level of joy is directly related to what we give. Look at their story. The, the Magi came, and when they came to the house bearing gifts, they brought gifts that were appropriate. Now, often we read through that, and, and it was funny, we've heard it so many times as I was talking to the kids about it, they were telling me what they were. You know, I'm like, and they brought gold, and they're like, and frankincense, and myrrh, because we know that. But I want us to look at what those gold, what those, those gifts meant. The gift of gold, that was a gift for a king. Kings were treasured with gold. So, so what they brought, gold, what they were doing was they, they were announcing that Jesus is king. We brought him a gift fit for a king. But the second gift they brought was the gift of frankincense. Now that's something we're not familiar with, but in their day they would have definitely been familiar with that. Frankincense was a gift for the priest. Uh, incense that the, the priest used in the temple, one of those incenses were, was frankincense. And by giving it, they were not only acknowledging Jesus was king, they were also acknowledging Jesus as priest. Because we have the rest of the Bible, we see Jesus is not only priest, Jesus is serving as our high priest. He offered the sacrifice uh, for our, the, our, the atonement of our sins. He, he's the one who stands in intercession between us and God. And so Jesus is that priest, and they brought him the gift, and the gift was appropriate for priests. But the third gift that they brought kind of baffles a lot of people. We're saying, okay, they brought him you know, this gold, and they brought him this, this frankincense. But the third thing they brought was myrrh. 
Myrrh, again, something we don't hear a lot about these days, something we don't use. But the myrrh was a gift for the dead. Well, whenever they didn't do like embalming and stuff like that, the Egyptians did, but the Israelites didn't. So what they would do is they would they would take their body and they would they would anoint it with spices and oils. And the thing they would use was myrrh. And myrrh was was that awesome thing that, that would kind of keep the body from stinking because they didn't embalm. It was a gift for the dead. So we say, well, why did they bring that to Jesus? I think the answer is simple. It was a gift appropriate for someone who came to die for the sins of the world. You know, that's why Jesus came. Jesus told us that. And John chapter 10, verse 10 says, I have come so that you might have life and have it to the full, or have it more abundantly. His whole purpose, the reason he took on flesh and came to earth was so he could die on the cross. So why did he do that? He died for our sins. We can't pay that price. If we were to die for our sins, we'd be dead. But because he was the son of God, took on everything that we might endure, he died for our sins and came back to life. Showing us that he has power over our sin, power over death, power over hell, power over the grave. When Jesus came, they brought him a gift for those who are dead. So we have to ask ourselves this question, what do I give? Now, I'll be honest with you. If you want to bring your gold to the church, I'll be okay with it. But that's not, that's not what the Bible tells us. And that's not what the wise men tell us. I don't believe in talking about material gifts. I really don't care what you got for grandma. I don't care what you're going to put in a package and give to your best friend. But what we're talking about here is something more important. Than that. What do we give? Let me give you some suggestions. How about, how about if at Christmas we give the gift of love? How, how about if we give the gift of kindness? Has anybody been to Walmart lately? No. You, know, you know what's needed at Walmart? <coughs> kindness. I, it really, is. you've been there. And I'm not talking about that. So if you're a Walmart employee, don't start throwing hymnals at me. I'm not talking about you. But, but, but here's the thing. Because this time of year is so stressful, and because everybody gets you know so much going on, what if you were that person just to give a friendly smile? What if you were that person just to say hello? What if that you were that person to just look at someone and say Merry Christmas? What if we gave the gift of kindness? What if we gave the, the gift of love and let others see that love? What if we gave the gift of help? To those who are hurting. So many folks are hurting. What if our gift this year was the gift of help? And, and it, we didn't, that didn't necessarily mean we have to buy something. Just be there to help. Be a friend. What if our gift this year was the gift of friendship? And I'm not talking about being acquainted. I'm not talking about just knowing somebody. I'm talking about being, their, being a true friend. You know that friend that does love does care for them. That friend that don't take their secrets to everybody else. What if this year the gift we gave was the gift of friendship? Let me give you another suggestion. What if the gift we gave this year was the gift of forgiveness? You know that person that hurt you? Maybe it was really bad. And maybe it was so bad you haven't got over it yet. You still struggle with Let's look at the gift we give. What if this year that gift was forgiveness? We can ask the question, what do I want to get out of Christmas? And most of the time, the answer that we put in there is something that's out of our control. We can't control the snow. We can't control our family. We can't control what gifts are available. We can't control what we get. So how about if we put our focus somewhere else? From the wise men, I think we learn, let's check our attitude this Christmas. And let's ask, what do I see? What do I look for? What do I give? I don't 
want to ask you this morning. What are you giving this Christmas? My first question was, are you satisfied this Christmas? And here's the chance that probably a lot of us would have said, not really. Let's remedy that. What are you giving this Christmas? Maybe for you, give time to your family. Maybe, maybe for you, your commitment to God right now is going to be God. I, I'm going to just, all, I'm so caught up in stuff about myself. I, this year, I just want to give myself to my family. Or maybe for you, it's going to be give compassion to someone that's hurting. Find that hurting person and help. Maybe for you it's forgiveness. Maybe when I talked about that thing and you already knew what it was. What are you giving this Christmas? Maybe for you it's forgiveness. In a moment we're going to sing a song and, and I'm going to invite you that anybody who wants to pray, or just let's, let's use the prayer of this church as our altar to pray. And maybe, maybe for you you need to come to God I I want to forgive such and such. Lord, I want to help such and such. Or maybe for you today, the gift that you need to give is yourself to Jesus. Because you might be here and, and you're, you're, you're trying to do good. You're, you're trying to do what's right. You're, you're trying to be a good person. But it's not always working out. And Jesus knew that. That's why he came and died on the cross, because we couldn't pay that price. So maybe today, the gift that you need to give is that one where you transfer your trust from yourself to Jesus. To say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I can't save myself. But today, I believe that you died for my sins. That you were buried and you rose again having victory over that. So today, I transfer my trust from me and I just give it all to you, Jesus. I want to give you me. Today, what do you give? How do you have joy this Christmas? According to the wise men, it starts with our attitude. What do you see? Where are you looking? What are you giving for Christmas? All those other things we mentioned, we can't even control them. Let's focus on what we control. Because I can promise you this. If you're seeking Jesus, and you're looking in his direction, and you're giving as he has taught us to give, you'll find your joy this Christmas. Father, thank you for your word. And Lord, as we think about our joy, and are we satisfied with Christmas, Lord, do we we find maybe there's things that should be in our life. So right now, God, I want to surrender those to you. Well, we're just going to give them to you and leave them with you. Lord, maybe there's somebody here that they're struggling. I pray, Lord, that you help them to change their focus. Maybe there's someone here, Lord, that today they just need to forgive someone. I pray, God, you help them do that. And Lord, maybe there's somebody here that they need to just give their life to you. So Lord, I ask you to be with them too. That today they say yes and give you the gift of themselves. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you say it with us, please?